My first question is, how do you all plan to remain inclusive to students who have never experienced, um, if they're Filipino, if they've never experienced their culture before, or students who are not of Filipino heritage? And um, second part of the question, how do you plan to include other students on this campus who may not be a part of this organization, but want to experience some of our events? Okay, well something that you brought up was bringing um, in students that aren't part of like this and just want to experience it and something that I found um, really great about the community here at USF and just in um, SF in general is that while we might not come from the exact same culture, a lot of the problems we face as communities and like people of color or like any of that, um, a lot of them are similar and I think that's like um, like the common ground that a lot of us can kind of relate on and I think that's something that um, brings in people that aren't just like here just for like Filipino culture but for those who um, have never experienced their culture um, I think that's the other part that like we have that base ground but we can also build up on that and like connect it to um, our culture but then we don't ex exclude the other people and connect it like at that base. So I'll touch on that. Um, so kind of like everyone kind of mentioned the mission statement unity and solidarity this past week or maybe two weeks ago, I personally attended a march on standing in solidarity with Stefan Clark, and it was an open space. Um, there was open dialogue for any person, whether it be people of color or not. It just, the Black Student Union, they personally had the event, and they just invited everyone. They advertised it around campus. And as PRPA, yes, we will have workshops that, we de that will be dedicated towards Philippine history, but also be workshops will be dedicated towards Filipino Americans and their struggle. And then leaving that open dialogue for everyone to come, no matter if you're Filipino or not, no matter what cultural identity you kind of associate with, it's just open to all membership and people outside. Can I go next? Um, just to like build on what Kristen and what Mark have already said, as you know, um, Kasamahan is a very prominent organization on this campus, and we have members who are not strictly Filipino, but um, having the opportunity to extend our doors, like um, welcome all these people by opening the conversation, that's very important because you know their input is as much uh, an, an important aspect of opening like the doors to them, not so we can only share our culture with them, but for them to share their culture with us. Yeah, I agree with what everyone has said so far. And I personally know a lot of people that want to come into Kasama or just go into workshops, but they think that they can't because they're not Filipino or anything. And I feel like really working with publicity and everyone just to make sure that everyone knows that it's all inclusive, and that everyone can come and <coughs> learn about our culture and learn about all aspects, even outside of our culture. <coughs> So I think my solution would be to establish conversations on topics where everyone feels like they have a voice. And my example for that would be the topic of birth control in the Philippines. Like it's a very politically controversial topic and there are many different sides to the argument. But I, f I feel like the key would, would be to have some sort of event where we would get speakers from both sides to weigh in on the argument. People that genuinely believe birth control in the Philippines is correct and people that believe Gen that birth control in the Philippines is incorrect. And only by listening to the complete arguments of people on either side can people discern the truth and from there form their own opinions. And the topic of birth control in America, especially in this day and age, is still like a very prevalent conversation and social justice issue in our society today. And using and examining birth control in the Philippines would be a pretty good segue into talking about a topic where everyone has an opinion and everyone voice can be heard. And just to finish off here, keep the ball rolling. You know, being one of the largest uh, organizations on campus, it can be kind of intimidating to, you know, to join Kasam Hunt and, you know, partake in the events that we give out. But, you know, just like what everyone else has said, you know, we have to be inclusive. We have to, you know, um, make make them confident enough to realize that although they, 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 they may not be Filipino, you know, a part of their identity is their culture. So, you know, by showing them that, you know, we're, we are proud of our culture, we can hopefully show in them that whatever culture that they come, come from, whatever background, that they have a reason to be proud of it too. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, one of PRPA's models is it takes two. So if in this position, how do you plan to work with the co? 
Um, well, definitely working with someone else, you have to have an open mind, just being willing to accept his or her ideas, opinions, being able to work around and with them. Um, if like ideas clash, it definitely is keeping that open mind. Also communication, being able to communicate each other and that transparency. If something is up, let them know. If you're struggling, you know, use the strengths of your co to help you with that assignment. If the other person is struggling, it's just vice versa, being able to help each other, talk to each other, and make sure you're there for each other. I think um, something about working with a co, yes, it can be a struggle in the beginning, but learning, um, I don't see it as a struggle like in the long run because one, uh, you get so many more ideas and so many, you learn so much more working so closely with someone than you would if you're just working by yourself. Yes, you can have your own ideas and it's like possible to do some jobs by yourself, but just having that person next to you, like that like companion with you, um, just like it comes with ideas that you would have never even like dreamed of yourself. And I think that's where the learning comes in. And I think that that's one of the most important things to have when you are working in a co-relationship. Um, because with that, um, there's like ideas and you just take that to the next level and you just add on to each other. And while, c and I agree like a lot that communication is so important because being very honest with whoever you're working with, um, no matter like the bad or good, like it'll only serve to benefit the whole relationship. Um, uh, so I believe in accountability. I believe that as, you know, this being a pair, a co-director uh, position, you shouldn't see like your your co like say if you're you know struggling a bit you shouldn't see them as someone you should you could you know fall upon like for them to take up all the work but it's some it should be something that where you pull each other up you know it's not something that like you know I can't take it anymore here can you take all the work no it's something that like you 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 know decide pre you decide you know beforehand you know this is what I'm capable of doing this is what you know I might not be able to uh, to you know handle so like let's share our strengths and weaknesses so that we you know we can you know benefit the organization um, so I think it's obviously very important to have that um, person have at, um, to have as a co and when working on a team with um, the role of PRPA because not only does it like open different perspectives you both have something important to contribute so if like you agree upon something then it, like and you have like issues you just work it out and that that comes from building the relationship from the very beginning and like opening the conversation and like kind of task managing what you guys are both able to contribute and um, so it's like one person like in dividing it equally um, yeah and just um, realizing that it's not just you alone. It's like you are both there to help each other. So asking for the help when you need it. Don't be afraid to do that. Um, don't limit yourself to just your partner as well. Like you have an entire organization to back you up. You have eboard to back you up. And that's just as important to the whole role. Um, I have a question from, oh, you can go, go ahead. So one of the struggles of PRPA that we notice is that it's really hard to like get numbers to accumulate when it comes to couple higher workshops or just any like cultural thing in general. Do you guys have any ideas to like gauge membership or to get them to come to like couple higher workshops and like community events? We'll give the opportunity first to so those who didn't answer. We're gonna like keep switching up questions so not everyone has to ask answer the same one. Um, but those who weren't able to answer. Uh, drawing as my previous experience is co-social chair of MSNS, but like that's an organization that has sometimes had trouble with membership. And translating what I learned from working with them is that the value of personally going up to someone and inviting them to come to one of your events can never be understated enough. And I realized that since Kasamahan is is an organization on a much bigger scale than MSNS, this idea might not be entirely practical, but if going up to someone and personally asking them to come to your event can guarantee them to come, then I trust that this organization has so much love and power through word of mouth and communication that if they go, if even one more person comes to the workshop and they will go tell their friends and then that network will just spread 
and just enable members to just keep coming and coming. And from my perspective, um, the workshops are not for us, it's for everyone. So what I would plan to do is to try to find a way to gauge what you guys want to learn. And so it, that could be, like, I would say a couple categories, like if you want political things or if you want just local and or just nationwide things, I would have little categories and you guys could vote or you guys could, like, uh, like group me or whatever we would use. And just to gauge what you guys really want to learn because it's for you guys and it's not just for us. I go? Okay. <laughs> and, um, so I kind of want to propose two solutions, or hopefully possible two solutions. So Copenhagen workshops are normally at night. Um, the same people keep missing it. The same people are just too tired to go because of classes and practices, etc. So maybe one possibility is to hold it during dead hour. You know, people can bring their lunch, have an open dialogue, that kind of like free open space. And another possibility in terms of advertisement, um, I know in my speech I talked about interpersonal development outside of the community. So maybe like that personal relationship within eboard, working with publicity, working with our story, and um, you know maybe have like these promo vids that could promote these couple behind workshops, post them on social media, and just being able to kind of like prepare membership to let them know that something's going on. And if they are willing to go, then you know it's open for everyone. Good question. Um, from finance, I mean, from <laughs> from election committee. So um, something that I've also noticed over the course of my time here is that PRPA can be pulled in very many, in a lot of directions, whether it's um, working out with the community, finding um, volunteer opportunities, dealing with um, being part of executive board. How do you, as an individual and as a team, do you plan to um, balancing all those different responsibilities that come with it? Okay, I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> Someone once told me about the importance of task management. We did like run as candidates for this role because we understand that we have skills that we're able to project into this role. And so it's a matter of like creating a schedule and working together efficiently. And if you have any um, issues with like managing your priorities, definitely communicate about it because that's so important. You know, have someone know that you're having trouble or struggling because um, you have so many resources around you to provide that help to help you do better and succeed at, in this role, but not only succeed to grow from like um, any um, things that you we're struggling with it in the first place. I think it's also um, a chance for like growth. Like I agree like totally with the communication because um, I feel that in past roles that I've held, like back in high school, I led um, a Filipino organization and um, we didn't really have something like this, but um, so I ended up doing it. But um, managing like time is one thing, but being able to like admit that like, oh, you need help with something is another thing that's like, I feel like is another part that's hard for a lot of people. Um, time management itself is something that um, is a personal skill and like it's something that um, you develop over time like or get better at if you already have it. So I think um, working to at least with that and like finding um, what works for you or works for your partner is really important. Um, <clears throat> I also like to stress yeah the fact that we're not alone in being co-directors you know we got a whole organization we got eboard behind us and um, a bit like for person personally you know I have family in the Philippines my uncle is a councilman in Kaliba where my, my mom is from so like I've expressed my desire to potentially like you know develop a communication system with you know schools and like you know just children people our age in the Philippines to like you know, develop that sense of Kikisama. So that's one thing I really want to focus on. Um, so understanding that spring semester is a loaded semester for both executive board and membership. How can you navigate around membership burnout and still be able to make sure that people are attending your events and your workshops? <laughs> 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 I'm 
<laughs> well, okay. <clears throat> Maybe during the second semester, we can, like, as PRPA, hold workshops that focus on Philippine dance because, like, I know for a damn fact that everyone has beats to the music of the Philippines dance, so they know the song, but they really don't know the history. Like, there's that barrio kind of like, everyone's simping basically at the barrio, and if anything, we can hold workshops to tell them, like, oh, this is actually the history behind this dance. You know, you hear those beats, there's history to that too. Everything has a meaning, and as PRPA, if we could work with like CD, CC, and the interns, maybe that probably, you know, would help with the membership burnout. Besides um, cultural dance workshops, I know there, are, at least my family does, I know there are a lot of also self-care things that Filipinos do, and so having self-care workshops could actually really help during burnout. I think it's so on the idea of self-care workshops. I know that mental health is something that has a lot of negative stigma within the Filipino community because a lot of people tend to just sweep it under the rug and pretend that it's not a problem. And especially in the second half of in, in the second semester, when we're reaching that midpoint of you know we're simping after barrio, and we're in you know the dreaded midterm season, and it it feels like there's no more light at the end of the tunnel. Like having those self care workshops, like can serve as like a general reminder that like we as an organization like like we're here for you, and we're willing to back you up no matter what you've got. <laughs> 